hey, guess what? Drew Barrymore, who is crossing a picket line to do her show along with The View, uh, she just got unbooked from hosting the National Book Awards. Well, then I'm not going. <laughs> wow. Unbooked. <laughs> Throw the book at her, Kurt. <laughs> Book her a room at the Bates Motel. Am I right? What did she? What, what did she do? Well, she's crossing the picket line. Oh, it's because of that. Yeah, yeah. Here's organizers of the National Book Awards said Tuesday that they have rescinded their offer to Drew Barrymore to host their annual ceremony this year, after news that her daily talk show would resume despite the ongoing writer strike <laughs> re received backlash. Do they not have writers? <laughs> In light of the announcement that the Drew Barrymore show will resume production, the National Book Foundation rescinded her invitation for the 74th National Book Awards. Our commitment is to ensure that the focus of the awards remains on celebrating writers and books, they say. Uh, first of all, this paragraph is so badly written, I'm going to blame AI. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so this, our commitment is to ensure that the focus of the awards remains on celebrating writers and books. This award show is the one chance a year to celebrate every kid who ever got shoved into a locker. That's what this is. <laughs> and I thought like three other award shows were that, but it's this one. Yes, this is it. I own this choice. We are in compliance with not discussing or promoting film and television that is struck of any kind. <laughs> I thought books were their natural enemies <laughs> of, of so, television. And <laughs> so she's going to, I guess she's going to be having uh, all of her non-discussions that she's going to be having on the show will be written by secret scab writers. You know that, right? Well, I, that's my question. First of all, I didn't know she had a show until you just now brought this up. E e until this happened, I didn't know and, either. I mean, what is, if like Kelly Clarkson is too intellectual for you? But you <laughs> oh, she has this. She has the show, didn't she? Where she kneeled down to oh, Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. Was, yeah, they got on the ground well, together. Well, this is and the held most hands. important show that's ever. Well, ever. Obviously, they can't stop production on this. I forgot. Oh, so we launched it live in a global pandemic our show was built for sensitive times <laughs> oh my god what the this almost what? killed me too reading this <laughs> our show was built for sensitive times you should call it that sensitive times they should call it sensitive times sensitive places sensitive times <laughs> and has only function how about your bonus hole that's a sensitive <laughs> and has only function through what the real world is going through in real time. I gotta make a fake show called Sensitive Times. I had already envisioned the whole show, Sensitive Times. Sense <laughs> you just have non conversations about horseshit. Well, Sensitive Times, this is about workers in all industries being replaced by machines. That's what this is about. When you crush labor in one industry, it has a domino effect to other industries. You might say actors will never be replaced with robots. Audience wanna see real people, but then you're ignoring Kevin Costner's entire career. Yeah. Well, uh, this is gonna. I, I don't think they. I believe AI probably wrote that show for already. Like, could they have had writers on Monday? Who wrote that bow to Villa, Dylan Mulvaney. Right. <laughs> on Monday, striking writers gathered outside CBS Broadcast Center in New York to protest the restart of her show. If doesn't if this doesn't change writers' neoliberal tendencies, nothing will. I mean, they you really like uh, they got to see it. Because it's a real, yeah. you know, I'm not, friends of mine that have channels are all like, because they hate all the crap that everybody makes now. They're like, go, good, you big baby. And like, it's missing the whole point, man. And it, it don't matter how shitty the writers are, I'm sorry, how, that they got. They're, it, it's, it, it screws it for everybody for all time. And then it's going to be like AI, and they're yep. going to get really bad writers to guide the AI. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, two audience members were turned away at her show because they were wearing WGA pins. Did you know this? Whoa. Yeah. Well, she, bent down, she bent down the other way and said, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, the pins contained better writing than her show did. Oh. <laughs> so here, you want to see it? So this is Dominic Terizic and Cassidy Carter. They were supposed to be audience members of the Drew Bergman show. They got kicked out. Because they were wearing the WGA. Here, you want to hear them? It's kind of hard to hear. Let's see. So we got tickets to the Drew Marshall show today. We had no clue. No clue there was a strike. No clue there was a strike. No clue she was 
to bring to her statement or anything today. And we showed up and we saw the strike and we were given pins. We took our little buttons. Yeah, this we is what got us kicked out of the Dewberry Marshall. Yeah, we were kicked out in the middle of everything after signing Verbally it. assaulted by yes. her security officer. Assaulted. It's really cute that Drew Barrymore claims that she cares about her fans and wants her fans to show up for the show. And then we get kicked out for supporting what is right. Drew, you should do what is right. Support your writers and support your fans who are supporting your writers. How far into the building did you get? Uh, we signed the waivers. Yeah, we got we in there. And then we went up to the bathroom and got pulled over by a security officer. And he was like, you're out. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling now uh, about about Drew and about all of it in light of this? I'm just really shocked. Yeah. To be honest, it's I had no clue she would turn her back like this, especially on her amazing writers. Yeah. It's, it's not about us, it's about the writers. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, what, uh, from this point forward, I mean, can you see a, a circumstance where you, you know, take another run at going to the show? Probably not, no. Especially after we could see inside that they truly, they don't care about the fans, they don't, they don't care, care about the writers. Uh, was, uh, how large of an audience did you have a sense of? Did, or did you even see that far in? Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... Guess what? Drew Barrymore's writers are outside the studio picketing while she continues inside without them. She's writing the show, most likely with some help, so effectively scabbing, and anyone with the WGA pin or shirt is being removed from the audience. This is villain shit. Who, how many writers does she have? I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know, but The View, same thing. The View <laughs> is back on. There's another show called The Talk. So they're all coming talk. back on. And I guess, am I wrong about this? But tell, uh, daytime uh, soap operas, they're back, right? Somehow they're, because oh, they know. have a different contract. There's a different contract for daytime stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these aren't streaming things. The streaming is what set this off. And it's because uh, they don't want to, they want to pay them like they're on YouTube. Yeah. Like, and not the good money, like, right. like what you would pay higher, you know? And mm -hmm. so, uh, they won't share. The bottom line is they won't share their numbers. They're like, well, we can't afford it to pay what you share. Well, okay, well, but they won't show you the numbers. And I'll bet you a few strong shows probably carry the whole thing, and then they waste money making crap, and then now they want to change labor standards over it. So her writers are outside striking while she's inside doing a show, and you know there has to be stuff written down to do a show. You can't not write. There has to be like... Whatever you intros, outros, that you have, so things have to be written down. Remember reality TV? How that got started? It was a way to not pay writers. It was a way to have the producers and the people filming and the people. That's on what it. that was. Uh, that's how I look at it because they eventually wanted. We're talking about some kind of strike because there is basically uncredited writing. You know, reality shows all turn out to be fake and scripted. Mm -hmm. So someone had to do it, but they just nobody was being recognized. They'd just be like producers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's that's true. I, yeah. They certainly tried. I, when I was on a reality show twice, it was very far from reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was all concocted, and it was concocted by shitty producers who didn't know how to write. People who want to do other shit. Hey, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this is almost as bad as when Drew swore off animal products, and then she did an about-face in the interest of self-promotion, endlessly pimping meat with her celebrity guests. What? Yeah, rotting flesh in a grade A phony. I'm I just thought gonna... she's a vegan or something. Yeah, but she, but that's what I'm saying. She's she's pimp. Maybe it was bugs. Uh, Drew Barrymore has set a bad effing precedent, says the Hollywood Reporter. Then here's the Hollywood Reporter. Several daytime talk shows may be following the lead of Drew Barrymore in restarting production during dual labor strikes, including The Talk, The Jennifer Hudson Show, and Sherry. Wow. So the daytime talk shows are coming back. They're cross so SAG after actors are on strike and the writers are on strike. And the talk show Whoopi Goldberg is an Academy Award winner, is she not? Yeah. And so she's in that actor, but she's not so they're crossing those lines. I think that you should so solid if you were an Academy Award winning actor. 
wouldn't you show solidarity with your brothers and sisters in the acting profession that are if striking? If you're already rich, I don't get why you would be like, oh, I need this job. Well, you know, I don't well, get it. Well, here's what this this person says. This is great. I don't know if you can see it. I'll read it to you. It says, the part of the Drew Barrymore thing I can't wrap my head around is how anyone would go back to work when all you have to do for people to not be mad at you is stay rich and on vacation. <laughs> oh, I, I can feel this one because... Uh, they're more worried about a person who's paying them a lot of money being mad at them than you being mad at them. That's all. That, it's, I can't... The same reason every stupid thing that just now people are starting to catch on to, uh, my money, uh, my money's going to be messed with. It don't matter how much you got. They're like, I know the, the rationale's got to be, we're not a streaming show. Yeah. Why would it affect us? And if I was somebody, and I've definitely had that situation of like, I need a job and I got to pay my rent, you usually can't get a credit is how that would work, you know, for stuff that's not connected. Right. But the payroll company is a struck company. That's the thing I remember from the last oh. time. But you're already loaded and famous and you got an award. And like if, if I could possibly ever, whenever I could afford to be like, go F yourself, I would absolutely do it in a yes. heartbeat. So I don't, that part I don't get. So I don't get it either. I, I'm with you. So here's... Uh, I'm sure she doesn't respect her writers. I mean, I understand that part. Nick says, all these progressives dogpiling Drew Barrymore as if they don't know she has short-term memory loss <laughs> and needs to have the strike explained to her each day by Adam Sandler. Oh. They must have some contract where they're more afraid of that than this. Be yeah. This is nice. There you go. Uh, there that's must from, be. Oh, that's from Firestarter, right? I don't know what movie e. that's yeah. from. It could be E.T. E. or that's Firestarter. E. No, it's not Firestarter. It's E.T. Yeah. It's E.T. So there you go. I, they're all doing it. All the cool kids are going back to crossing the stri the the picket line. Well, Isn't it's time that for, for a new generation of writers to learn what we all knew. Nobody respects writers. <laughs> really? <laughs> One of the lowest. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought comedians were were the lowest. But no, they no, get, no. Uh, yes, comedians obviously. Are, way comedians, below that. Yes, yeah. of course. Below ventriloquism and porno. I always say that. <laughs> but I'm saying in showbiz terms. Okay. That's like the comedian they, of showbiz is the writer. Okay. Ha! <laughs> okay. But they do give starring roles to. Uh, they usually build TV shows around comedians. So maybe in television, if you show you can do more than just that stupid crap like writing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Tampa, Boca Raton, Orlando, Dallas, <laughs> Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, and Levittown, New York. Wow, that's a lot of dates. See you there.